All right, a relatively straightforward video today. We're going to talk about disassembly and cleaning of the valve blocks. The front and rear valve blocks are the exact same mechanism, and so cleaning them will be identical. The valve block itself consists of three solenoid valves controlled electronically by a wiring harness. The high pressure lines that connect to the valve block are tipped with Voss type connectors. These connectors allow for a screw on airtight fitting, but they require uh, clean and intact o rings attached to each end in order to prevent leaks. The Voss connectors screw into each of these ports. In order to disassemble the solenoid, all you will really need is a T20 Torx bit. Start by unscrewing each of the four uh, fairly long Torx screws. Once all the screws are out, you can slide the two halves of the body apart from each other. One thing to note is that the two lateral solenoids are exact copies of each other, and so I will only disassemble one lateral and the middle solenoid. So here's my rear uh, valve block, and I was concerned initially that it was difficult to pull this out. It was very difficult, like, right, obviously I already done it. I already I did it earlier, so it's not hard at this point, but it took like a pretty considerable amount of force like I was pulling as far as I could, and eventually it came out. I did it on the bottom one too, and I lost the orange o-ring. It's probably on the floor, but it's okay because I'm getting a new one anyway. And so, but when a solenoid is stuck, it's not pulling this out. That's not what's stuck about the solenoid. What's stuck about the solenoid is, um, and more internal and so there's these o-rings that are clearly dirty from desiccant material and is so to repair or to kind of refurbish that refurbish this on your own you can just clean these off I would use some uh, silicone lubricant or uh, even like a spray and just spray them down and kind of make sure they're clean from the desiccant material and so we have another one here <clears throat> and this orange one. So make sure to keep these somewhere so you don't lose them. But the dust cap material on the outside can be an issue because then it would cause air leaking from around this area out through this crack and then it's leaking into the atmosphere and that's, that's a problem too. But when you're talking about leaks between like the compressor and the uh, spring itself for the compressor and the solenoid as opposed to the solenoid and the outside air then that would be oops, a leak inside here and so if this this is the solenoid and so when the electromagnet becomes energized it pulls this in it goes this is off and then this is on with it pulled in and a solenoid can easily do that you know that's not that much that's not that much pressure and so a solenoid would be able to to achieve this amount of pull and this is a little rubber gasket and when it opens it opens up the channel that communicates from the inside so the very deepest hole there to the periphery and the little periphery area and that would be whatever's on the periphery so in this case it's that one or that one and so when it opens it connects these two channels when it's closed so these two channels are uh, independent and so as long as this is free moving like that and you can open it up and there's this plug here this plug can actually come out and so if by some like miracle it comes out and gets flipped around or upside down or whatever then that would be a problem as well but looks like it's fairly free moving there's a little bit of like a uh, clunk in, in the middle but it's not too bad I'm not sure if that's reasonable or not I'm out. but to reassemble this part's gonna go like that and we just put this part back on top 
turn it around like it's a thermostat or something, you just like flip it in. And then put the O-ring one, O-ring two, and then the final O-ring, the orange one, kind of like that. And then this goes back in here, like that. So those are the peripheral O-rings, or the solenoids. The central solenoid, again, is a little difficult to pull out. Oh. So here you can actually see that the middle solenoid was stuck in the open position. This would mean that the two rear springs were communicating with each other at all times. This possibly could have been the cause of my suspension fault errors. So this one operates in a little different manner. Oop. Okay, so it also has a spring, but the spring, instead of it being on the outside like the, uh, the two lateral ones, it's actually an internal spring. So you pull this out and you have this arrangement. This doesn't go anywhere. This is connected. And again, there's a lot of this desiccant material. That's one of the causes of failures of these. And then you have a small spring in here to provide resistance to force the valve closed when, when it's unenergized. And so this goes in here like that. And then when the solenoid is energized, the electromagnet pulls this in and then allows air passage between the two circuits. And actually, when I'm doing this, there's quite a bit of resistance. And so that when you, it comes time to repair a valve block, if you just go in here with a Q-tip and silicone spray or lubricant and you just clean off all of this stuff and just make sure everything's moving, that would go a really long way. You probably wouldn't really need to buy a new valve block. I mean, this stuff, nothing in here is too crazy gonna break, is gonna break down to the point, unless you find like the O-ring is split open or, and then you need like a new O-ring and it'd probably be pretty tough to find the exact O-ring that would fit, but maybe, but yeah, if you just clean everything really well, I, that might be enough. And so I'm going to ruin this one because I have a replacement, but the, oop, okay. Well, the orange O-ring just kind of comes off, but they all have orange O-rings. And again, that's to prevent air from leaking between the interface area and just leaking through the side of the valve block, which you don't want. And then you have this piece here, which is very difficult to get out, but it would ask out. Oh. I'm not probably have to do this off camera, hold on. Okay, so it does come out actually. It did take a little bit of pulling, but as you can see, it's a similar arrangement here. You have a inner area and an outer area, and the solenoid connects the two. And then this should be an O-ring. Yeah, and it is. It, this is actually pretty, oh, it's not that bad. It's just covered in the dust cap material as usual. But, uh, put it back, like so, but, yeah, it's just a different type. Um, this is probably dealing with only high pressures, but, I mean, because it, this, this is where the valves share pressure between the two. I mean, not the, not the valves, the air springs, so if one air spring is too pressurized, then it'll send air to the other air spring or vice versa. And this is the solenoid that performs that task. So I guess I can see why it's a little bit different in different engineering, but uh, ooh, that's a little bit dry actually. So, you know, but that being said, I mean, it it's fairly similar and then you can put it all back together just like the old one. It would be pushing this in, and it's tight because of the uh, O-ring. And then you put that there, and then you put this there. The only difference is, this doesn't really stay. Once you free it, I mean, once it's, if once it's been pressed together in your car for like five years, it'll stay. But once you pull it out, it's not gonna stay. And it's probably, you're probably gonna end up doing what I just did. Like all the stuff's gonna fly everywhere. And so, 
to see and like listen to that in sun right so this definitely needs a cleaning but in order to put all of it back together you kind of just have to hold this okay and then you return these with the o-ring and then you return this and this one's missing the orange o-ring because it fell on the ground but it doesn't really matter because um, I'm, uh, this isn't the this isn't the vinyl block I'm gonna end up using for my car anyway, and so this is a little tough because <laughs> it wants to fly around. But if you just keep it upright like that, and then sneak this on, it should come back together just like that. And then as long as you line up all these, then it'll screw together just like you found it, and. After cleaning, that might just be enough if it's a stuck valve or stuck solenoid that is causing the issue in the first place. If you liked this video and would like to see more like it, please feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I will post videos about once a week regarding Range Rover Sports and LR3, so stay tuned and hopefully I can save you some money with your car repairs. Thanks a lot and have a good one.